Good morning. My name is Jackie Beatty, and I'm here to welcome all of you this morning to say how glad we are to have all of you here worshiping with us. We have a special welcome to any of you who might be worshiping with us for the first time. We're so happy that you have chosen to come and, and worship with us. If you would leave a little bit of information with one of our ushers, I know that our staff or our welcoming committee would love to get in touch with you. So that makes us happy. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things before we begin here. Uh, we have um, prayer cards that are available. I think the ushers have those. Or maybe you have a slip of paper and you want to share a prayer with us. Uh, just hand those to the ushers too so that we can uh, get them on the prayer list and have them being prayed for. Our Wednesday morning prayer group is back up and meeting again. And so I know that they would love to pray for any of those extra things that you want prayed for this week. Um, our offering boxes are at the back of the sanctuary, and you can place your tithes and offerings in there. We also encourage any time pledging. So maybe you've already made a pledge to the church for this year, uh, but maybe you want to change it. Something's happened in your life. You're always welcome to put that information in the offering boxes also. And so, as I was doing my devotions this morning, I have this book by Helen Steiner Rice. She writes poems simply so that even I can understand them. I'm not a big poem person, but these are really cool. So let me share one with you. It's based on 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, saying, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that is, in due time he may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares about you. So here's my lovely poem. Let us go quietly to God when trouble comes to us. Let us never stop to whimper or complain and fret and fuss. Let us hide our thorns in roses and our sighs in golden song and our crosses in a crown of smiles whenever things go wrong. For no one can really help us as our troubles we bemoan. For comfort, help, and inner peace must come from God alone. So do not tell your neighbor, your companion, or your friend in the hope that they can help you bring your troubles to an end. For they too have their problems. They are burdened just like you. So take your cross to Jesus and he will see you through. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
standing, will you join me in the affirmation of faith? I believe in Jesus, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life Heavenly Father, you are the beginning and the end, the one who calls us to life and gives us life in all its abundance and gives us faith and makes us to come home to you when we are ready. Your thoughts are higher than our beliefs and our plans and our understandings of what is right. And so today we stand in shock trying to comprehend that Raoul is now with you. Whatever is happening, we know that you bless this church with his presence and that you will bless his family as he is struggling to understand how to move on from here. As your church family and as Raoul's family, we offer a prayer for all the ones who loved him, who got to know him a little bit, who learned from him and struggled with him to make sense to this life and to life everlasting. Lord, this morning, it's our honor and our prayer to lift up all the ones who are going through the motions. What a full life and a full church life we have these days. Some of us are grieving and mourning, trying to cope with the loss of a loved one. Some are coping with anniversaries of a loved one that is not there with them anymore. Some are trying to make sense of people moving on and moving away and letting go. Some of us are just rejoicing in this summer, even if it feels like it's a little bit too hot for all of us. Lord. I look at my prayer list, the prayer list of our church family, and it's a long one. This morning I lift up the family of Grant Kinzer, the friends and family of Ernesto. I lift up our dear sister Dottie and Jim, Karin, Kathy, 
the friends and family of Grace, the friends and family of Joe, friends and family of Roberta. I pray for Jerry, Kenneth, for Carolyn, Joellen. I pray for Ellen, Evan, for Ellen and Amanda. I pray for your church family, for Mary and Steve. I pray for everybody who is struggling with hardship, family dynamics, situations that challenge them economically. And I pray for all of us as we're moving towards the New Mexico Annual Conference this week, virtually, but being one church that does your mission and your mission alone. Lord, we know, we know what to do. You told us exactly on a new day that we did not deserve. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice in and through all it because you are in your house. All our prayers we summarize in that prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Oh, thou God divine. 
Our scripture today comes from Psalm 20. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. Selah. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May he shout for joy over your victory and sin and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from the holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. The word of God for the people of God. So last night at 9.30, I got the insight that I needed all week uh, from one of our sons. They always bring the best ideas. So he comes out and says, hey, mom, so do you know what you call someone without a body and without a nose? I, said, I don't know. I said, nobody knows. <laughs> now, I need to get that into the sermon somehow, but I needed to lift you up this morning, right? Yes. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know about your life, but it's been an interesting week in our church life. All the full life coming together, everybody with a, with a different story, and that's what we wanted, that we're back together and bringing what, what God is working on us in our home, in our private places, and then we're bringing it back together. So thank you for sharing. But it's the whole spectrum. It's all the colors, right? From bright yellow to a little bit more dumb, a little bit more thinking about what does this mean in God's eyes? The whole tapestry being waved together, weaved together in a, in a, in a, in a beautiful picture. So thank you for what you're bringing. I was sitting on the bleacher together with Wanda yesterday in Apodaca Park. 104 we had at the end, right? Baseball game, high schoolers. We were cheering on these high schoolers. And while we were sitting there, it was hot. One lady came and she, it was Magdalena against Messia Valley Christian. She brought water. And she was just throwing water up the bleachers after you had to leave one. I said, anybody need some water? Right? Yes. I said, this is what we are. This is what a community of faith is. We don't know each other very well. People come from different backgrounds with all kinds of stories. Some are limping. Some are mourning. Some are going through struggles, fighting enemies, going through hardships. And some are rejoicing and can't wait for the next week because they have something beautiful planned. But we're here to cheer on, to enjoy a game and share the water with each other. That's what church is about. And everybody who's here, who put their foot in the door and the premises of UUMC is, is making an impression, literally. Everybody, some are there for a short time, some are there the first time, and some have been there forever, it seems. We're like trees. Excuse me. Trees who are coming together, rooted in a beautiful tapestry of colors. I brought one of the pictures with me. That a lady that is sitting there in the fifth pew, Mary Lacey, painted for the church. Right? And she said, this is what I think of when I think of this church. I want the church to have it. 
For the ones who didn't get the news, we have to send them off today at the end of our service because they're going on a mission. Who wants to go to Idaho on a mission? But they need it. So we're going to rent you out for a little while, but that picture will stay there and it'll go back in the narthex. Everybody is a, is a tree, rooted, granted, bringing together this tapestry of life. <coughs> Different stories that you all have with you. You need to turn that mic off for a minute, Jeff, and I'll get some water. When we come together as a community of faith, we come together with all these colors. And we stand together. And we celebrate the blessings that everybody brings. But I listen very well to the artists because if you don't listen to Mary, you're in trouble, right? She said on the other side of that picture goes a poem. I did do it. And that poem goes together with a picture. So today is poem day, and I'm going to read that one. Waves of love. That's what reminds me of this church. Beautiful, colorful, powerful are the magical waves, touching and exciting everyone with rainbow splashes, shouts of joy. Your sparkling eyes, beaming smiles and laughter ignite the spiritual waves within me. As days, weeks, months and years pass us by like tides that wash away, I will rekindle memories of sharing and caring and friendship made, created by God's Spirit during our short time together. This love given wholehearted, from the heart. May God's love be your guiding light all the days of your life. Shalom. All the days of our lives, we're bringing our tapestry of lives together. You want some water? All the days of our lives, we're bringing something that God has only put in your heart and mine together, and it gets that beautiful shape of God's forest and God's garden. And some we have to let go. They move on. We had a beautiful celebration service this week, right? Lottie for Roberta. Yeah. But in the midst of it, we celebrate and we do what we're supposed to do. And we were on a Zoom call this week with one of our missionary coordinators to get the global missions going. He had no clue of who we are. So he said, tell me about your church. And I said, oh, it's easy. We surf, we study, we worship together locally and globally. And that's what we do with a lot of joy. And everybody brings something. And then it all comes together here in God's house. This is who we are. And I said, that's impressive. And then we bring together that under the scripture, the word of God. Psalm 20 today. Thank you, bishops, who organized and said, this is the scripture for this Sunday. Absolutely. Did you hear it, what Jackie said? It's not nobody knows. It's about someone who knows his stuff. And I'm all in it for you. You can put it in front of you again. It's in the bulletin printed. Psalm 23 is all right, but maybe we should learn Psalm 20 by heart also. It's about the Lord will support us. The Lord will protect us. The Lord will remember us and send us help. Everybody, you need some water, you know. Come together. Wherever you come from, whatever language you speak, no matter how you look like, just be there and bring what you have. And God's going to make that beautiful forest out of it for a little while. And I know there's two, two parts in that psalm that give us a little trouble. They, they don't seem to apply to us anymore. Did you catch it when you read through it? Something about 
that God will look at our offerings. This is not a message from the finance committee, right? God will watch your offerings, not of that. And he will be in favor of your sacrifices that you brought. We can say that that's, that's the old days. That's Psalms. That's way before Jesus Christ came. Did not Luther and Wesley and Karl Barth and Bonhoeffer say, it's all about grace. We don't need to earn that anymore. God's going to help you anyways. My dear brother, Raul, whom we have to let go of, he was struggling so much with it. He would call and say, I, I still don't get it. Tell me simple. Do I need to do something to earn a place? And I said, no, Raul, it's all paid for. So what about this sacrifice? I could hear him here today. What about that God is looking in favor of your offerings that you bring? We could just maybe put that a little bit on the side. And that's Psalm 20. Stay with her. God protects you. God supports you. God gives you whatever you need. And then there is another problem in that psalm. Not a problem, but something that is not up to date with our situation. It's about blessings for the king. I know it was David who wrote that psalm, so he probably was writing it into his own pocket, and please protect the king, that's me, David. Oh, he needed a lot of protection and blessings, didn't he? Yeah. But well, we're not in an aristocracy, as far as I know, here in the United States. We're, we're not the United Kingdom. We don't say, God bless the queen here, don't we? So maybe we can put that sentence aside too when it says, may God watch over the king. Read it, it's in the psalm. But besides that, all the other parts are good. God will protect you. He will be your help. The name of the God of Jacob will be your protection. That's how it starts. I was driving the other day on Solano, and there was this car in front of me, a uh, kind of silver hand-painted car, a Ford Mustang. I, don't ask me which year. I, I, a car has four wheels and it drives. But it was kind of got my attention, number one, because it, it had that muffler, you know, this thing that makes so much noise that you can't even hear your hymns playing in the car. Yeah? And, and number two, it had that bumper sticker there in the back, and that says, move out of the way. And the problem about that was I said, oh, that's pretty rude, right? But the problem about it is that car was going like 22 miles per hour on Solano. And I was in a rush to the next meeting. And I finally got that curve, and it took him two seconds to get into that parking lot at Loaf's. I said, you know, before you buy a car, just learn how to drive. <laughs> Move out of the way. That's not how we solve the problem. Nobody knows, right? Yeah. So we can't move things out of the way, and you and I know that. We can't move the sentences out of the way and cut and paste, even in our favorite psalm that we're reading today. We have to, we have to get to work. Enough excuses. Watch this. The psalm starts with the introduction. God will be your help in times of trouble. Done. Yes, I need that. And then it says, the God of Jacob will be your protection. Now that's our key word for today. If we don't get closer to what is the God, the name of the God of Jacob, we will still have trouble with his sacrifices and about God blessing the king. Do, do you remember who Jacob was? We're not talking about our Jacob. I know I pick on you every time you're here, yeah. We're talking about the Jacob in the Bible, the heel holder. We preached on him how many times in the last year? He keeps to be popping up, right? The one who pursued of happiness took it really literally, who wanted to get first out of his mom's womb to, to be the firstborn, to get all the privileges. The one who cheated his dad, Isaac, while he was on his deathbed so that he could get the blessing the one who had to flee, run away. He was constantly in trouble. He had elbows. Jacob was German. I pretty much think that's what he was. Me, 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 me. Yeah. It's all about me. I know. And then he would serve there with his 
father-in-law just to get a good wife, but he didn't want the first one, he wanted the second one. It was trouble after trouble after cheating, after trying to get somewhere out of his own efforts. And you know where that whole thing ended up. In the end, he leaves Laban and runs from him too. And he knows when he's going over that river of Jabbok, over there is going to be Esau waiting for him, his brother who promised, if I get to see my brother again, I'm going to kill him. So trouble before him, son, brother, father-in-law behind him, and, and he's sending his flock and said, you guys go over there already, and now he's all by himself. Wrestling. Wrestling and striving all night with God. You know the story. And in the morning, when they finally come to a, was it a time? You look it up, Genesis 32. He has one more question, Jacob, asking, who are you? What is your name? The name of the God of Jacob may protect you. Psalm 20. And to make a long story short, he does not get an answer. Heck no. The one who's wrestling with him all night is not going to give him the answer to that question. What's your name? It's God. But... He said, I'll turn it around, and I am going to give you a new name. From now on, you will not be any more Jacob, heel holder, me, me, me guy, the elbow man, the one who wants to do it his way because he knows he's strong and he wants to get somewhere. I want to change your name to the name Israel. And do you remember what Israel stands for? It means God contended. God is striving and is fighting with you. From the cheater to the God contended name. I'm going to give you a new name and a new identity, period. That's all you need to know for today. Now, this is a long excursus because we need it for understanding Psalm 20. May the name of the God of Jacob, that's the one who's changing your name, protect you. Watch this. If the one whose name is not revealed right there, but who's changing your name, he's also changing your identity. So from now on, you don't have a choice. You're not going to be Jacob anymore, not ever what you do. This is a commandment from our Lord and Savior to say, from now on, I want you to be that new person, the one that wrestles with God. God contended, and God is with you, fighting it out all night until we come to a conclusion. I will bless you. Do you know what that means? That means, wait for it, that you and I will have to sacrifice, here's the word, our former identity, that you and I will not anymore by any chance be the Jacobs, the German Heike, the whatever you are, wherever you come from, not even the famous UUMC. You will be a tree in my garden, and you will put your roots down the way I want to, and I will be contending you, I will strive, I will fight with you, says the one whose name is not revealed, so that you have a future. You're looking at me, so pastor, let's get to the end. Why, what does that mean for us today? Yes, we can all sign that and say, yes, I want your help. I need that special protection. Send me some advice for this and this situation right now, but you're not doing it anymore with the identity that you had before. You're going to do it as the one in the bleacher who is accepting, yes, I need some water from God. With your own story and with your own challenges and with your own joys, but it's coming together into God's story. Former Jacob is now Israel, who's going to be a blessing for the nations. And all you have to do from now on is, let's wait for it together with Raul and say, accept the grace. Thank you, God. We have a place in our liturgy, in worship, for how we do that. And we had to stop it for a little while, but you heard a piano version of it this morning. We call that, and Lon's going to get ready right now, and, and so is Bill. We call it a doxology. Do you remember? What was the doxology again? 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. And now, praise, praise Him above the heavenly realm. Praise and holy host. Amen. Do you remember that? That's what we do. That's how we change names. That's how we do sacrifice from now on. I said, don't forget that, Heike. God, please help me to be your child. The one who only will wrestle with you anymore all night through. God has all the time in the world so that he can sort it out and I'll be his servant from now on. That I will sit in the bleachers and get active and drink my water and cheer on God's mission in whatever I do, wherever I go, whatever I'm going through. This is all that there is. And the one who's sitting in the heavens, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, will look in favor to our sacrifice and say, well done. We should sing that in a little while, right? And get back in that habit. Oh yeah, we did that when our offering plates were lifted up. Remember Usher is how we did it? Yeah. That's heavy with these boxes there. Yeah. It's a good problem to have. But not only about the offering plates, we're talking about lifting up our own lives for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being in charge. In the name of the God of Jacob, we offer ourselves, remember the communion liturgy, as a living sacrifice. So get ready, we're going to do this in a minute. But there's one more point. Remember, the other problem we had in that psalm was about the bless the king. Bless God the anointed. And we said, we don't do that anymore. We have leaderships and governments, and I'm not going there today in our countries. Yeah, yeah. The one that is meant to there is the only one who will teach you and I how to do that sacrifice absolutely complete. We're talking about your brother. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Remember how Jesus Christ, the beginning and the end, on that cross, giving it all for you and I, instead of, despite of who we are, became the king, and became the anointed one. Now it makes sense. Maybe David didn't even know it. Maybe he had just a clue because this is before Jesus came to earth. That he's talking, blessing the anointed one. Get out your bulletins and read it along with me on the reading for today on Psalm 20. We'll start with verse 6. And I'll read you the first verse to explain it, and we'll all read it together. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. Now the speech is there not anymore about David only, or about some random king who needs the blessing of God. The speech is here. The blessings is about our Lord and Savior, the anointed one, anointed with oil. And you know what that word stands for? Anointed is the Christos in Greek. Christ. And Christos, the anointed one, is the word for the Messiah. The Messiah becomes the Christ, is the only true king who will only bring the complete sacrifice. And he's the one who will have victory. Read along with me verse 6 and then all the way to the end. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. That's the king. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses. But our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall. But we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the king, O Lord. Answer us when we call. They're talking about the Messiah, about Jesus Christ, about the only one. And we're looking from hindsight who said he accomplished it. There's the cross up there, way above 
our paintings, way above our trees of lives and waves of love. He's the only one, the first one who prepared the path for us. And now we can say, all right, I'll bring my sacrifice too. I'll just follow in his footsteps. I'll just follow the one who got the victory. And my new name and my new identity will make him prouder. You will say when I come home, when I say, I tried very hard, not my will, but thy will be done. He will say, well done, my faithful servant. If you want to see a modern version of that, you need to go to the movies. We probably need to. We should do that together as a church, right? One of the actors of that movie and co productor is sitting right there, Wanda. It's going to play for another week, right? Walking with her, who has seen the movie already. Right? Was it good? Absolutely. That's how you do a sacrifice. That's how you do a sacrifice. It's not about baseball, it's about golf. Anybody likes golf around here? Oh, what a question, yes. Maybe we'll arrange it and we'll just all go to the movie theaters. We need to give ourselves as a living sacrifice and reflect the King, our Lord, our Savior in his ways of ministering to all of us. No matter what stages of lives we're going through, whether we mourn and we grieve and we're in shock and going through hardship, whether we're fighting enemies or we're just rejoicing and said, what a pleasant day the Lord has given us. And then we live and bring everything together we have. And we may even manage to let people go on their next mission somewhere, even if they have to go to Idaho. And we'll preach it through waves of love. Do you remember? And then we'll sing the doxology. And our whole life will be a doxology. Whether people want to hear it or not, to you be the honor and the glory now and forever. Beautiful, colorful, and powerful are the magical waves. Touch and exciting everyone with rainbow splashes, shouts of joy. Opening doors into my world, your sparkling eyes, beaming smiles and laughter. Ignite the spiritual waves within me. As days, weeks, months and years pass us by, like tides that wash away, I will rekindle memories of sharing, caring, and friendship made, created by God's Spirit during our short time together. This love given, wholehearted from the heart. May God's love be your guiding light all the days of your life. Praise God. Praise Him. From whom all blessings flow. And nobody will run that joke anymore. Nobody knows. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Give honor to the King who survived and who strives and has a place for all of us. For the Robertas and the Rauls and the Joes and everybody of us too. And they will be like trees rooted in the beautiful forest of his church community and sing his doxology all the days of our lives. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Lawn and Bill, it's all yours. Doxology.
May the Lord watch over your coming sin and goings out from this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.